So containers is a big buzzword in today's industry. And if you're like me, being a coder and containers is kind of moi. You just want to focus on the code and not worry about the rest of the things. And of course, containers is important, but .NET's got you covered right now. So better stick out with this episode of Barney Live. Hi there, folks. My name is Fani Reinders, and welcome to another episode of Fani Live. It's my stream where I do all sorts of funky uh, experiments. Uh, we follow the news, we check out all sorts of things that's been released from Microsoft.net and Azure to see what's happening and how we actually use them. One of the most important things that I think it's really important for us to start realizing is that the coding world and then the container world and the ops world are really moving together as a DevOps world in itself. And we all know microservices and, and serverless, all those kind of other um, terms. We just normally want to focus on our code and get our deployment out. And being sometimes there's novice programmers or just developers that's just in the game, doing all these other ceremony with Docker and Kubernetes could become some scary. So .NET actually released a kind of a preview version of .NET 7 that includes support for Docker out of the box, which is very cool. I'm just going to quickly share my screen. This is a blog post by Chet Husk uh, explaining how everything works. And I thought, well, I'm going to make a video of this to kind of detail how easy it is to kind of bring container support to .NET in just a few lines of code. So I'm just going to quickly um, open up my terminal here. I've got a little sandbox environment set up and it's fairly easy. So what we want to do is we want just want to create a new application. We call it .NET new. Well, let's call a Blazor server uh, application. We'll call this, uh, for instance, uh, happy days. And when that's provisioned, in a few seconds, we want to uh, CD into that happy days uh, folder. And one of the things, one of the most important packages we need to add now, right now, and of course we can go ahead and .NET run this application locally, but the point is we want to see if we can run this in a Docker container. Um, so before we can do that, we actually just need to add a package. And this package is called Microsoft Net Build Containers. And as I understand from the blog post, it is quite temporarily. So hopefully this in the future will become part of the options of the template, hopefully. But uh, let's see how that happens. So we'll do a .NET um, add package, uh, Microsoft Net build containers. And that should add the package with all the kind of targets and, and build stuff that we don't really want to dig into, into our application. Right, so now one of the second things you should do is, let's say you have your application, you coded it in a Visual Studio code, just open up Visual Studio Code to see what it actually generated. Right under the hood, we have our Visual Studio Code instance open. And just off the bat, going to your csproj file, we see there's the containers thing there. And everything looks normal, like we didn't really change anything. It's except this uh, Microsoft Net Build Containers package actually adds additional build properties and build targets to your project. So we don't have to worry about those details. Maybe we'll make a more in detail video of that later on. Oh, and by the way, if you're watching this, please do subscribe to my videos down below. And if you want new content, uh, hit the bell button or the subscribe button, or even comment down below to, to kind of give me more feedback on what kind of videos you would like to see more. Now, of course, coming back to our application, um, when we have this whole thing going on, uh, we, we can actually now publish our application that we've just written to uh, anywhere like Azure or AWS or whatever, but our aim is to publish it to a kind of a, uh, as a Docker container image or as a container image rather somewhere. So the idea here is, you know, normally we could say .NET publish and the OS we will choose it's uh, Linux and architecture would be uh, 64. And that's what we normally would have done for a Linux 64-bit distribution image uh, assembly. But because we're working now with containers, the thing that we need to do is to add this special uh, uh, flag here called Publish Profile. 
and we need to call this default container. And that will actually run the whole um, publishing of this uh, um, application as a container. And it will actually call the image happy days. So if I'm correct, we can actually now use Docker to run it. And we say IT and we want to say our RM and P. We want to expose port 5010, uh, which is my external board, for instance, and my internal board is port 80. And happy days should be there as version 1.0.0. So if I run that, we will see that happy days is running and it's kind of running somewhere, hopefully in Docker. And let's quickly check it out. It's running definitely on um, board 80. So if I want to, for instance, open up a uh, browser of Edge, uh, localhost 5010, open that up. And there we go. There we have a counter. We have everything set up. That's the Blazor server-side application running inside Docker. So I can quickly go ahead here and stop it. As per normal, the application is, um, is terminating. Going back here, you see it's attempting to connect to the server and it's actually failing. This proves that the application is really running inside Docker. So one of the things I've really noticed here, and if we could just go to code, Visual Studio Code, um, so this is the application, nothing much has changed, but what we could do, we could potentially just add a publish profile flag in here, right? And uh, we can call this, for instance, a default container and publish profile. And that is it. When we save that now, and when we go back to our code again, uh, let's say it was .NET publish, the idea is we can technically remove this now because now Docker will know which version to publish into Docker. So we can actually say, hey, it's push the container happy days v1 to Docker. Well, if you don't believe me, let's go ahead and make a change. Uh, let's so uh, go to index and we say, welcome to your new app, uh, maybe hello world. Let's change hello world to happy days. So the version two of our application should actually now point to happy days. Uh, I wonder if the version would make sense here, but let's for now replace version 1.0. Um, let's do a publish again, .NET publish. It will does the build and when it runs in a second, okay, that has been happening. So technically you would use a different version, but my example, I didn't. If we then do a, a Docker run, right, version one, this should go back to my application here. I wonder if the retry will actually work. And there we go. And happy days is fully working. Well, that is it. And that is how you add Docker support to your application without going through all the ceremony and all the la di da of Docker and containerization, and all those kind of things. Now you can also be an expert in DevOps and containers. Check it out. Like I said before, Subscribe to my feed, subscribe to my um, my YouTube channel. You can head on to rangers.co for more information of my blog. And I'll check you on the flip side. Cheers.